The Fresh Maker. Tiger uppercut. Sweet. Hey, how are you doing, Cam? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, doing good, bro. Um, yeah, thanks again for coming on, man. Um, yeah, just just give us a brief uh, rundown about yourself. Ah, shit. Uh, okay. Um. Cameron, also known as Cam's Ace. I've been in the FGC not too long. I think my first ever tournament was Ping Zero, which was like season one-ish of Street Fighter V. I didn't play four competitively, so I'm like pretty fresh face to the scene. Um, yeah, been looking for something like fighting games for a, a hell of a long time. I was like a MOBA player before this. Oh, and yeah. Going from all the crap you have to put up with with MOBAs to fighting games where it's like self-improvement, self-discipline, no one to blame but yourself, just like complete night and day. I've never looked back since. And yeah, here I am. Maybe maybe you could... What is it like being a player in the MOBA scene? Uh, a lot of time you have to spend. I played Dota 2. So games were like 45 minutes. So if you wanted to play like a proper session that's like hours and hours and hours as opposed to fighting games, just pick up a quick set. Um, I played a lot of Dota. I'd say eight or nine years or something. I played way back in Dota 1 during university and played as competitively as I could with my limited talent and limited <laughs> player pool to, to, <laughs> to choose from um, to play with. But yeah. I enjoyed it at the time, and then as I've gotten older and had less free time, fighting games is just like slotted into that niche so comfortably that, yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, I mean, but although a lot of fighting game players, they jam League of Legends on the side, even like Dota as well. Like, what? Yeah, they, they why is do, it so yeah, popular? I, I, I don't know. It's just like a. Um, I think the thing about MOBAs is they're a lot more fun when you have people to play with like it, like playing say league solo rank is like an absolute nightmare it's like an exercise in torture but like what the the soul factory guys do um jamie and jambo and co and josh and even like dio when he plays um i'm pretty sure he plays with friends it's just so much better because you take it so less so much less seriously and it's like almost anything you do with friends is fun right yeah yeah for sure man um it's yeah, I don't know. It's just a, like an unwinding thing. <laughs> and um, yeah. I, I was I was saying to you before the recording how I thought you were older than what you actually are, and kind of yeah, what you were yeah. saying. I I always felt like you were a part of the scene for a long time. I didn't know you were no. that recent. Yeah, I'm pretty recent. Um, I think I only started going to Rambats in like 2018. I want to say 2018, maybe 2017. At the end, I'm not sure. I can't remember when Ping Zero was, but. Definitely, um, for less time than five has been a, a competitive game. Yeah, I mean, and I, I I didn't know anyone as well when I when I showed up. Um, I saw the list of players and I was like, I don't recognize anybody here. And it turns out it was like Zazob and Cornova back when he was still here, and uh, Cub T, and I think uh, Sky was there. But yeah, so it turns out there's just like some of New Zealand's best were just there the whole time, and I just had no idea who they were yeah until i got decimated <laughs> and then this whole you know you being a part of salt factory did you have to earn your place or did they feel that oh this is a special guy we want him in our little friends group i honestly can't remember how it happened like how how i joined i just i think i just pestered them for games enough and they just eventually let me in <laughs> yeah i don't know um yeah i i I don't know if I could necessarily pin it down to any one moment when suddenly I was in the factory, whereas the moment before I wasn't. But yeah, I just started playing with them more. I started hanging out with them more and then joined the dojo in Street Fighter and <laughs> I guess that made it official. Well, before fighting games, were you... What what were you like, the younger self? You know, Were you jamming any games? Did you have any passions before entering the fighting game scene? Ooh, uh, 
I mean, like games in general, I played my whole life. Um, like uh, anything I could compete in, I used to compete in music. I played the accordion. I used to play bridge. Um, I used to play poker for a living, actually, for three, four years. I did that. Um, I dropped out of uni to do that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've just been like loving competition for as long as I can remember. Yeah. So I guess fighting games are like a pretty natural transition. Was this like poker, like legit poker in casinos, or were you doing it online? Um, I I went to Sky City a few times to enter their like big tournament series, but mostly this was online. Okay. Um, and I did I did quite a bit of coaching as well. Um, and I ran what's called a stable where you coach players you stake them and then they give you like a percentage okay. so we, i had i lived with a uh a, a couple of guys one who i ran the stable with and one who was in the stable um for like six months and yeah it was just like a poker house just jam poker all day and talked about poker and is it quite um i don't want to say profitable but um w- what is that like in terms of like a day's work like going in, Ooh. you need to achieve a certain figure in order to kind of make that day worthwhile. Uh, you can't really think of it like that. Um, depending on the game, you can have massive swings. Like um, there's certain players who are professional, who are some of the best in the world, and they can have losing years, not days, not weeks, not months, but they can have a losing year. And you really have to be able to stomach that. Um, I had some days where I lost like, I don't know, two and a half, three grand. But it just it just comes with the territory. You just have to learn to stomach it. Yeah. Or or um because if you play scared money then suddenly suddenly you're not like maximizing your E V and you're yeah, you're leaving money on the table essentially. Every yeah. decision you make, you have to make the most money you can. So if you yeah, um make a decision wrong because you know, you're you're scared of losing some something, then you're going to be making less than if you could get over that. Yeah. Um, and then and obviously that makes the lifestyle pretty stressful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, when you gambled, um how did what was your were you quite a steady gambler or yeah, and just in the, in terms of talking about the mindset of like you're going in to play a game and how much you you want to put up initially and then as you work your way up like I was incredibly like um, structured and um, mathematical in my approach. So I would only play the games that I was comfortable with, um, and I would um, alleviate, you know, the loss in earnings there by playing more and more tables. Um, I was actually relatively well known in the games that I played for being like a mass tabler, as opposed to a multi tabler. I think my record was like sixty-five tables. That I played it once. Okay. Crap. Um, <laughs> yeah. So like, um, because I don't, I don't, I don't really like gambling. Uh, to me, this was being able to m- make money by essentially playing a game and doing like probability and statistical analysis. Yeah. Which I'm, which I think I'm good at. Um. So like, for example, um, since I stopped playing poker, I basically haven't gambled at all. Like, I won't even bet on like esports matches where I'm pretty confident of the result i just just not into it yeah um, really weird yeah well you um when you were talking about like training others like in, in playing poker did that ever mm-hmm. add a level of stress like wanting them to succeed in their own way no no it, completely the opposite it was so carefree because um of how we set up the stable. So essentially, like if you play by yourself and you have a losing day, that can feel bad. If you have two losing days in a row, that's even worse. If you have like six or seven guys playing for you, the odds that you have a losing day are so much like, cause you're like, you know, rolling more dice, right? Mm. So that like the swings even out a lot faster because there's just more games being played. Um, and then I would often just coach for an hourly as well, which was like completely disassociated with the stable. And obviously, you can't you can't fuck that up, right? Like yes. it's, it's always you're getting paid for it no matter what. Um, so actually, that's what 
happen near the end of my poker career, if you can call it a career, as I did a lot more coaching than I did playing. <laughs> well, hey, tell me this, like, out of the Salt Factory boys, if you could get them at a poker table, who would you put your money on in terms of actually doing really well? Ah, oh, that's such a, that's such an interesting question, because I think they all have their strengths. Like, um, Chris, uh, Chris Tang, Tinkos, um, by far the most analytical, he would be like, take to all the stats and the strategy and stuff immediately, but I wouldn't ever want to play a game of like bluffing with Jambo. That just sounds like an absolute nightmare. He would <laughs> destroy us. And then Jamie's like a really smart guy and kind of has like att attributes of both of them. So really, I think all three of them would be like pretty decent poker players. Mm. Are there any, are there any like poker aficionados besides yourself in the seat? Not that I know of. I think... I don't know how well known it is that this was my like previous life. I think I've told a few people, but haven't heard of anyone playing or anything. Mm. Well, you've mentioned how much you've lost um, on a particular on a particular um, session. But what's the mm. most? What's your biggest hot streak that you've had while playing poker? Um, probably my best day was like four, four and a half k or something like that. Sweet man. Um, and uh, this is in US as well. Everything's in US. Oh, so okay. It was a, it was a pretty. I ate pretty well that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. You, there's no thought of you going back to, to poker. Nah, nah. It's just well, for for one, the games are way harder these days because there are so many people who, um, there's like a lot of online res uh, resources, and it's so much easier for someone with like a that comes from a company a country with like a low minimum wage sort of thing where they can sort of grind out like a few US dollars an hour and live really comfortably. And so there was just like this massive infestation of players like that who, because you make all your money from the fish, it's like relatively well known. If you play against like guys like this, like a table full of them, you might be better than them, but um, with stuff like the rake, um, you're suddenly, your hourly suddenly drops massively. Yeah. Um, and then the other reason is that it just it started feeling like a serious grind and i lost all motivation to like not only play but like study and continue to improve so um well yeah once that passion was gone i found it really hard to keep it up yeah were there or are there any infamous um poker players that you like looked at for 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 ideas on strategy or just playing the game um the thing with online poker is that it's it tends to be really there's, there's so many different games you can specialize in, and to maximize your hourly, you should always specialize in that one type of game. And I played something niche enough that, um, not really, not really is the answer. You do kind of self-study, and then there's like people in the scene who are like, you know, from being in the scene, but no one really famous. They, yeah. they play like a pretty different game just because of the stakes, and then usually the format is a lot different. Okay. Huh, all good. Well, I'll just um, bring it into the uh, nation to nationals. The nationals run that you had, um, you know, you played Street Fighter Five. Um, you've also taken an interest in Grand Blue. Overall, how do you think you did in your in your run? Um, I was pretty happy overall. Obviously, the losers finals match versus Reno um, left a bit to be desired, but. The only thing I can say about that that is that he like just absolutely soul read me, and he was by far the better prepared player that day. So um, he's been putting in so much work. I, I I'm not I'm not annoyed about losing to him, and I beat some big names on the way. So overall, um, the thing I was the most unhappy about was I guess how little work I put in for it. Um, part of that was because I was focusing a bit more on Grand Blue, but yeah. the other half was just sort of laziness no 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 because you are very yeah you're you know you definitely put in the work as a player um not coming prepared it's kind of weird hearing you say that man i feel like i do more thinking about the game than i do actually playing it um just you know the whole full-time job and girlfriend and stuff is takes a lot of time out of the day um but, you know, they can't stop me thinking about the game at work, right? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, t tell me briefly what... Um, so this match was Soul Brother 3. What was your kind of run-ins with him before? Did you go in feeling 100% confident? Yeah, um, I've played against Dio a lot um, in tournament. And, I mean, no disrespect to, the, to him, but 
the matches often end like they did in this instance. Um, I respect him a lot as a player, but I don't know. I just have his number for some reason. Yeah. And I mean, he's the part number. Of, he, yeah. Sorry, man. You go. Uh, part of that's the matchup. But... Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I know he's another player that, like, he doesn't participate a lot in the um, online scene or even in the Rambats, but when it's a major, that's when he shows up. Yeah. 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 And he, he is, he's pretty consistent, really. Um, he makes a lot of top eights. Um, and he's from, I don't know, a non-Auckland region, which is kind of hard for the, the two major games in Street Fighter and Tekken. Although, I mean, having said that, Tekken at Nats was uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, oh, God, yeah. I mean, uh, what do you think is one thing that's limiting him from kind of getting the number over you? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, but then it's subjective because I'm asking you and it's like you're his target. Yeah, yeah. But it's, I'm just like, if you were to be honest, what would be one thing you would tell him to that he's that he's kind of missing or he's lacking or that he needs to do? Like play more, I guess. I don't know. The, the, the really hard thing about playing against Manat is like if you want matchup experience, it's just me. Like yeah. there are a couple of men up in Australia, but um, no one to my level. And the character is like, it's a lot of work to, to try and fight. Um, so I don't, yeah, I don't really know. Mm. I mean, aside from him, there's Moose as well, who's a, who's a, who's a Ken player, but he's, uh -huh. he's another one that kind of just plays, comes and goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've played against him a lot too, and... I don't know, he may even do better than Dio, just because I think he's had more experience playing me than Dio has. And maybe he has less of a dislike of the character, but I think in both cases it's pretty up there. Yeah. <laughs> no no one really likes fighting Minat. <laughs> and then obviously, Not even me. Hey, we've obviously got your boy Zazob, um, our car ride to Nats. Um so yeah, yeah another another storybook match. Um Yeah, thoughts or feelings on it? Uh yeah, another another person who uh dislikes Minat in a pretty significant capacity. I've, again, I've played against him a lot. Um, I think the numbers of this matchup um, aren't super indicative of um, like how our sets would average out. Like I think I'd beat him, but more narrowly than, than I made it look here. But I think that was just... I don't know. Yeah. Do you think I, that... I, Sorry, man, you go. No, no, I just was going to say, I think I just sort of guessed a bit better than him on the day. <laughs> Do you feel like Cadme is always going to be that problem character? It just seems like throughout the series, like Cadme, she's, you know, the developers aren't doing, you know, like she's always kind of in that top tier sphere, isn't she? Like she's never really, she's always got to be up there. She's never brought down. Yeah, she does something kind of unique. Um while at the same time being a very f dry sort of fundamental character um like dive kick is an important tool in almost every matchup that she's picked in and if her dive kick is bad then the matchup is usually bad um but she can always make a comeback she can always um outfit see you if, if she needs to like she's she's she can be played in many different ways i guess and she's still pretty yeah i guess she's been nerfed a few times but she's still just hanging around and being sort of mid high tier at minimum mm. well you did say that you took out some pretty big names um and this match with Zazob is in the losers side so who actually put you in losers man do you remember uh yeah that was um blackout oh um, yurian was it yes it was Shit. um and actually he he really caught me off guard because i know he's i mean he plays like 15 different games um, and I don't think he'd been playing much Street Fighter, but he he played really well. Um, yeah, I wasn't prepared for him at all. And it's a matchup that I've historically struggled with and is also one of the few matchups that both my characters lose to. Um, but, but yeah, I, I got to give him full credit for it. He played really well. Okay. Who, who, who would kind of fit, even though they lose the matchup, who fares better? Is it Minat or Chun-Li? Uh, definitely Chun. Chun loses slightly but maybe like moderately but um it's a horrible matchup for Minat. okay yeah i mean i would say yurian is a pretty niche character in our community um we don't really have anyone i mean we had waza but he's formally retired 
Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of a shame because the character is really strong and absolutely everywhere. Like, there are several Urans in Australia, and having that matchup experience would be really nice. Um, not to mention he's, like, absolute minimum top three this season. Yeah. I think he's top one, but that's, that's something else. Yeah. <laughs> and not many people agree with me. Well, we were talking about that, right? Like, his, his new V-trigger, that kind of, that answers new, to his weakness. The V-skill, yeah. The V-skill, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, previously zoning matchups like Guile, um, well, usually fireball zoning matchups like Guile, um, sort of made it difficult for him to get around their fireball pressure, but he suddenly gets a tool that not only builds him towards one of the best V triggers in the game, but it also just like auto wins zoning matchups mm. inherently. So, <laughs> Did you think that the car ride back home was going to be awkward if you took out Zazov? Nah, nah. <laughs> um, I mean, we're probably going to run into each other eventually in tournament, and I mean, he was the one driving, so maybe it would have been better if he beat me instead, but... Yeah. And that's another thing we were kind of joking about, is that, like, Street Fighter, like, you don't even have to get to top 16, but you're already going to be running into, like, really strong players. Yeah, I think the, the, field, the, the field for Street Fighter is, like, ridiculously strong all the time. Um... Because the the players that are left are usually the ones that have played a lot or play a lot of games and so have like that fundamental baseline. Um, yeah. Like uh, if you see the brackets at Auckland Rambats, like we have like three players who are good play three other players that are good in like round one. And it's just like a massacre from the very beginning. Yeah. Like even to just get to top 16, you've already like had to fight like a shitstorm of good players. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, it's just I don't know. Uh, Street Fighter is just a competitive game. I guess it's no different to say like Tekken, where you're gonna have to fight someone strong to get into top sixteen. Yeah, I mean, with the Street Fighter Five run, obviously it was Reno that that took you out, and you said you might have been a little bit unprepared. Um, but how how does Nakali um, fare against your characters? Because he actually took used Nakali, which was kind of a yep. you know bringing it home. Yeah. Well, we blind picked intentionally because he would rather play Nikali versus Chun and he'd rather play Karen versus... No, sorry, the other way around. He'd rather play Nikali versus Minat because I think Nikali is Minat's worst, very worst matchup. Um, and he would rather play Karen versus Chun, which is sort of evenish, whereas she loses to Minat. Yeah. So we blind picked um, and I kind of got the result I wanted, although I still don't like fighting Nikali. Um, Chun actually does beat Nikali as well. Um, I don't know how, how, I mean, it's Nakali, he can always make the comeback. Um, so he's never out of it, but she does outfit him quite badly. Yeah. But on that day, Reno just had every read. Um, I just got soul read a couple of times. Um, I wasn't playing my best. He was, so yeah, yeah. he deserved it. And then obviously you get eliminated. How did you spend the rest of the weekend, bro? Uh... Ate some chicken. I owed the factory that for my placings. Um, Grand Blue helped there as well. Um, yeah, just watched all of the Tekken. The Tekken was amazing. Um, actually, all the games I watched were amazing. Yeah. Um, and then the Salty Sweet afterwards is really cool as well. Obviously, yeah, Grand Blue. Um, yeah, you took out the National. Oh, no, wrong one. No. Um, Grand Blue, you took out that event. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, the anime, the anime games, I mean, yeah, that's another niche in itself. Like, mm -hmm. you wanted to kind of claim that title, like, you know, yeah, Street Fighter player can, can take this out, come first place. Um, there, was some, there was kind of some reasoning behind that, right? Well, the thing about this game is that it's way less of an anime game than it looks. It's actually, I would say it's closer to Street Fighter than something like um, Guilty Gear is. It's actually a really fundamental footsie neutral based game. Um, so I kind of took to it immediately and I play one of the characters who was like just pure fundamental. Like, yeah. She's like the Ryu of the game. And that's um, Charlotta, right? No, that's uh, Katarina. Oh, Ka Katarina. Sh sorry, Charlotta is the small one. That's Dog's character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think when you just I think when you describe me what she was Charlotta was like, it's like oh she can demon flip, she can Yep, she like, has like a Kuna style demon flip and then she's like Honda. Yeah. Bro. She has like four moving specials and, and hundred hand slap. 
yeah, I thought that was frightening when you described it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it is. It is frightening. Fortunately, my character deals with it quite well. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, no, just like I don't know, like the anime, the anime games, the anime players, like they're definitely present, but you know, because of the lack of, you know, like I remembered seeing some of the old Guilty Gear, Melty Bloods being played at old Rambats. I don't think you were there at the time, but just. Yeah, it's good to see anime representation. Besides, obviously, if you don't count Dragon Ball Fighters. Yeah, yeah, which kind of is just Marvel, right? Yeah, yeah. T um, Grand Blue got a bit um unlucky with COVID as well because it really didn't get a chance to like gain much of a following. Um, I think we had like one Rambat, and then COVID hit, and suddenly locals weren't a thing anymore. Yeah, which was a bit um unfortunate. But after my nationals run a lot of people who watched the tournament said that they were interested in picking up the game because they watched me play it which was a good sign i think yeah. i don't know whether they'll follow through but no it's um it's great you see it with with like um blackout and dio making top eight even though they haven't played the game very much that you know it's, it's kind of a game for almost anyone as long as you can get over the aesthetic of it yeah and sometimes the aesthetic can kind of um it's not appealing to, like, if you come from that era of Street Fighter, mm -hmm. you're probably not gonna like Grand Blue. Like, if you don't like comics, you're not gonna like Grand Blue. Yeah, yeah, I could, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Like, I'm not, I'm not an uh, anime. I mean, I'm King of the Weebs, as uh, Butterjaw has given me the title now, so I have to be. But I'm, I don't, I don't watch anime or read manga or anything. So <laughs> it's like, it's like not my aesthetic, but I just like how the game plays. Yeah, and I think. Uh, Later in October, so after Nationals, a few weeks later, they put out a trailer for, I'm probably going to butcher the name, Cagliostro? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, what the hell is this character? <laughs> She's pretty weird. Um, right from, like, her backstory, which is very weird. Like, she's some thousand-year-old alchemist in a girl's body for some reason. I don't, I don't really know, but... Uh, she is quite tricky. She has like a trap. <laughs> she lays down traps and stuff, and um, she's she seems quite set play focused. And I haven't really had a chance to to play around with her much at all, or even play against her. Yeah. But yeah, she's a weird character. <laughs> Prior to her, it was um, Belial that got released, Belial. and we were talking about how he's probably going to be the main pick, the main character at Nationals because he just, he could do he was quite strong, you were telling me he's like he could, he's, there's no weakness to this character yeah, um, and that's been reflected there's been like some recent um, there's like the Rage series that um, in Japan, um, and there was something like 9 Belials in the top 16, so it felt a lot like when Leroy was first released for Tekken <laughs> just sort of a character that's quite easy to pick up but happens to just do everything better than everyone else so like why if you're competing seriously why wouldn't you play him yeah or why wouldn't you play yeah why wouldn't you play Bla? why wouldn't you play Leroy well if I mean I can speak for us not to other parts of the world but say if there are signs of life and people can kind of be social do you think Grand Blue can thrive yeah I think so um I think if people give it a chance, they'll find stuff they like about it. The cast is quite varied, so whatever playstyle you're into, you'll sort of find someone that fits that niche. Yeah. Um, and like most of the players that play it are the anime guys. Um, so I think there's a lot of room for like the Street Fighter guys or like the multi-game guys, like um, or like Blackout and Dio who play almost everything to to give it more of a fair shot and get the numbers up and because there's not too much anime game representation at like a big event like nationals anymore i think it's just grand blue and then again dbz if you count that yeah there really isn't um you know guilty gear xrd i mean i, I don't know the names fully but the, you know melty blood <laughs> um persona maybe some play maybe there were some people that played persona as well um, yeah, yeah, but the they're, big, they're always but, playing different stuff at like um, locals. Mm, but the big question is, and I'm sure a lot of fans will think it: Would it survive when Guilty Gear Strive arrives? Um, I think 
That is a good question. Um, from what we've seen of Strive, it's shaking up the formula a lot, and I think it's becoming more like fundamental and a bit slower. So maybe it'll like take over some of that market share that Grand Blue currently holds. But I don't know. I, until we get like hands on, um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Yeah. I, I will probably give it a go though. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite keen to give it a try as well. Yep. Did you um you heard about that Capcom hacking incident? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Um that's kind of crazy, but then I mean, you look at how the developers approach the game with online uh online netcode and you think, oh, maybe their online infrastructure isn't as up to snub as well. But um yeah, what were your thoughts or feelings about that, man? Um well, I think most development houses don't really take um, security seriously enough because I'm, I'm a software developer by, um, that's my actual daytime job. So, um, yeah, I'm well aware of how something like this could happen and how it could just be overlooked. Yeah, you kind um, of understand I, the, the, the liabilities and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as for the actual info that was leaked, um, Fighting game wise, I like everything everyone expected Street Fighter Six to, to happen at some point. Um we have like a more concrete date than we did, I guess. Um there's some cool stuff in there for like other Capcom games as well, like um some sequel that people were looking forward to that was leaked. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head now. Yes, the websites are up and running, so But I don't know, stuff like that just happens and I think um it's a it's a little unfair that people are just going, oh, you know, it's Capcom again when this could really happen to most companies, I think, because it's like an issue for almost everyone not taking um, security seriously enough. Yeah. But do you think that the Cap the Capcom employers themselves, do you feel like, yeah, I mean, I'll admit it, they, they kind of dropped the ball, but then again, it could have happened to, the, it could have happened to anyone. Um, yeah, that's basically how I feel. And um, yeah, they they have done some stupid stuff in the past, obviously, with like um, the rootkit that they tried to install, which was just a unbelievable thing to to try. Um, I don't know how they ever thought that would get past anyone, but I don't know enough about how software development works in Japan to know why stuff like this is happening. Yeah, I I think they just like to do stuff their own way. Um, without really caring whether that's the right way or whether, you know, that, that problem has been solved before. Yeah. Well, how would you feel? I mean, how would you, f I think it just affected, I mean, how would you feel if it, if some unknown personal party did gain access to, let's just say, your online Capcom ID or even pretty much holding NZFGC by the balls? Yeah, I mean, that's obviously a concern, um, depending on how much info they actually have. Like, if it's just a screen name, then that's fine, but if it goes deeper than that, it could start getting pretty scary. Um, yeah, security's, security's pretty terrifying in general. Yeah. Who, do you know of any other companies or any other people, like some examples of some really bad security breaches? Uh, I mean, there's, there's been heaps, um, just databases of like, um, username and passwords gone everywhere. There's, I mean, there's like enough tools on online that you can see whether a company has leaked your, um, details, like just doing a simple search because that's how bad the problem is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it just happens too frequently and to companies where they have the resources to ensure that it shouldn't happen, but it does anyway. It's mm. kind of, it's kind of unsettling. This is quite separate, but um, there was that thing a while back where Facebook had sold, um, you know, people's personal data to second, mm -hmm. third, third companies and stuff. Because um, I was thinking, like, why am I getting all these emails from like Bunnings and Warehouse, and I haven't even signed up to these, you know, like mem offers for membership and just advertising. It's just like, should you know? In terms of where companies stand on on doing something like that, are they? Do you think there should be some kind of action if they sell your info to an outside party? Um, 
absolutely and there's i think i know there's a lot of push in the software industry to try and hold companies accountable for not only selling but just collecting info that they really don't need in the first place um stuff like google like facebook they they already know everything about you yeah and that already is terrifying but it's just some of the like subtle psychology they use to to influence you in ways that you you have no idea that you've been affected there's a really really good documentary on um netflix that deals with this i can't remember the name off the top of my head of it but um yeah if you watch that not knowing any of this you will you probably you probably get rid of social media on your phone like it's terrifying yeah it's really really terrifying i remember um, one time i was looking for something and i was searching for it online and then later that day i signed into my email and up above you know like the little ad banner you know it could be random it could be anything that's advertised and what is advertised it's the actual thing that i'm looking up yeah it's like there's been fuck, plenty man. of um anecdotal um evidence of people who are just talking having a, a in-person conversation with someone about something and then they'll get ads on their whatever um even though they've never google searched or typed it or done anything all they've done is talk about it face to face with somebody and their phone has inadvertently or probably you know it's a little less than inadvertently but has picked up that info translated it and generated an ad because of it yeah it's horrifying mm. what about you man have you had a similar experience to that uh, probably, but I don't know. I'm like almost too desensitized to it because I, I know better what's going on behind the scenes, I guess, that none of it really surprises me anymore. Okay. Just like... A, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's, that, that's, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's good to it's good to, to have those kind of intuitive recommendations, but then when you look back, you're like, Jesus Christ, like, all I did was yeah. look up this thing for five seconds and now I'm getting adver advertisements and like, uh, video previews, you know, before every video, YouTube video I watch, it's just like, okay, it was just yeah. the one moment. I don't need to keep seeing it every time I go watch a video online. Yeah, like occasionally it is useful, but more often than not, it's annoying and and borders on like invasive. Yeah. Well, yeah, Street Fighter Four. How are you? Fe Sorry, Street Fighter Five. What I'm mentioning is going to go back to Street Fighter Four. But how are you feeling about Street Fighter Five now, my friend? I think the last like crucial update they did was uh late oh, i can't even remember but how how do you feel about the game um i think it's in a good spot uh a couple of tweaks here and, here and there wouldn't go on this but um i think the game's by far in its best state um no one's really sure what's going to happen with the balance patch it's supposed to be happening like um japan winter time so in like a month or two probably um they've said that there's going to be a new mechanic no one has any idea what it is um there's lots of speculation but yeah i mean i'm re i'm still really enjoying the game um everyone's sort of a bit burnt out just because nets is over now and um the balance patch is going to happen before any anything major happens so um yeah everyone's sort of just chilling out on it but um yeah i'm excited for it yeah is there one particular thing that you want changed for your characters or added? Uh, no, nah, just buffs, I guess. <laughs> just buffs. Just buffs. However, however they feel like it, you know, more health, more damage, whatever. Okay. Just buffs. Well, I want to take your, I want to take you back to Street Fighter Four or Arcade Edition or Ultra Street Fighter. Um, mm -hmm. and since you play Manat, you know, I, we've covered Dan. I want to go over Manat's mentor, Rose. Um, mm -hmm. a very special character. I know a lot of people were very happy about her being announced. Um, yeah, how did you feel about that, man? Uh, completely indifferent, actually. Indifferent. I'm, I'm so much more. I'm so much more excited for Dan. I really? love Dan. Oh, yeah. dude. <laughs> um, I don't know. She's. I mean, she's still a, a possibility. I try almost every character out on release just to see um, if if they'll mesh. And you know, she's like sort of defensive and footsie oriented, so. She certainly could be a thing. Um, I think Zazob's a lot more excited about her than I am. Yeah. Because, yeah, she's, like, his character for sure. Um, Playstyle-wise, I don't think her and Manat have very much overlap anyway. Um, 
So, I, like, Capcom uh, from four to five have changed so many characters so drastically. Like, um, c characters like Cody, completely, completely yeah. different to how they were in four. So, I don't know. I know there are certainly a lot of people who are excited for her, though. Um, did you ever try her in Street Fighter Four? I actually never did. I never touched her. Oh, okay. Uh, interesting. I did. I did play a few characters in Four as well, but for some reason, never, never rose. Okay. Well, who, who, who were those characters? Um. Well, my best character at the moment is probably Poison. I, again, a character who is like drastically different in Five. Um. I played some Ryu. I played some Seth. I played a bit of Cody. Uh, some Sakura. Um, but I never competed, so they weren't really up to scratch, and they probably wouldn't have been able to hold a candle to um anyone in the scene at the time. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm really excited to see what they do with her. And yeah, obviously, I'm not a Street Fighter player. I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, the zoning aspect. I mean, Minat's got that down, so. Maybe she could be more footsie space, but then they did say they were going to introduce some new um, new traits or new mechanics. Well, something new with her that we never had with Street Fighter mm -hmm. Um Yeah, no, I'm 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 pretty keen. Um, I don't know what what do you think she what do you think would make her different from Manat in Street Fighter Five. Well, Manat's pretty unique already. Like, the orb system doesn't really exist for um, nothing like it for any other character in Street Fighter. Um, almost in Street Fighter history, I want to say. Um, there's, like, puppet characters in anime games, but they tend to work a little bit differently. Um, that's really what interests me in Manat, which is why Rose is, like, kind of a conservative maybe at this point. Um, she was still pretty straightforward in 4. So unless they make drastic changes, I think she'll still be like sort of just vaguely defensive and zony and footsies, and she'll probably be really good um, anti-zoner as well, like she was in four. Yeah. Um, because that was her niche was like reflecting fireballs and just destroying shadows and characters like Sagat. Yeah, actually, I wonder if that would, if reflecting fireballs, that could be her actual like V skill. Each it's yeah. It's it's most likely she'll get something similar to it, kind of like how Minot has it. Um, but <coughs> I don't think they'll they'll be very similar at all, aside from maybe sharing a couple of like maybe she'll have um, soul throw like Minot does, and maybe she'll have a reflect like Minot does. But how she actually plays will probably be totally different. Mm. So with the lineup, you had Dan, Rose, Oro, and Akira. Um, Akira, yeah. Yeah. Did you have any other thoughts on those characters? Um, I, I'm a big fan of Oro, um, so I'm kind of excited for him. Um, Akira, I don't know much about, um, the game that she came from is, was sort of before my time playing fighting games. Um, but I'm kind of happy with all four characters, really. Um, there were seasons where I was like, okay, the, a couple of characters look good, but a couple of characters I couldn't care less about. I'll probably give everyone a try that's been announced so far. Oh, sweet, man. Okay, I think we're ready for the final round segment. So, are you up for it? Yeah, yeah. Sweet, bro. First one What's your choice of coffee and where do you get it from? Ah, uh, I actually don't drink coffee whatsoever. Oh. I'm one of those weird people who functions in the morning without it and I drink tea mostly. That's amazing. Oh, okay, just normal tea? Uh, all sorts, um, usually either green or normal, yeah. Okay. Sweet. And just, just from your own kitchen, or do you like to... Is there a specific place that does good tea? Ah, uh, no, just from my kitchen or from, from work, wherever it's uh, freest. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next one. Which character has better footsies, Colleen or Laura? Uh, definitely Colleen. Um, but then Laura has that, hello, I win. You guessed wrong, sort of. Oh. Um, trait to her. Um, yeah. Colleen's really, really footsie based. Really footsie based. Sweet. All right. Have you ever felt proud standing amongst short people? <laughs> uh, 
Because for those who don't know, this is a very tall man. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, I don't know. My my whole family's really tall, so being a, like we've always sort of towered around everyone else. Yeah. Um, I don't know about proud. I guess sort of you know pitying. Oh, more accurate. <laughs> Okay. All right. What's the first thing you thought of when you saw Chun Li's thighs for the first time? Uh, did you come up with these questions? Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what did you think of the first time you saw Chun Li's thighs? Fucking steak. Big, thick <laughs> piece of juicy steak. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean,. I don't know. I think of, um, I think of the caveman club. You know the the big brown like the big meat thigh that they like swing around. The cavemen do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. huge meat on the bone. Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty yeah, much. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. No, I don't know. I think they suit her. That's as far as I'll go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you were a gym leader, choose three Pokemon for your team. Oh. Okay. Well, that will be Gen One because Gen One is the best. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, now, would I be a type or would I be one of those tryhards like at the end? Totally to you, man. Totally up to you. Oh. Yeah, I think I'd be one of those tryhards. I'd go something like, uh, Electrode. Electrode's one of my favorites. Um, I really like Articuno. And... Hmm. Huh. Maybe like a good old Blastoise or something like that. Oh, that's a strong team. Yeah, Blastoise mm. is a strong pick. All right, Cody or Guy? I do like Guy, but it's got to be Cody. It's got to be Cody. Yeah. Even even in his Street Fighter Five iteration. Yeah, he's he's just a cool character. <laughs> All right. What's been your worst tournament experience? Um. I think it would have been one of the early ones um, when I didn't really know anyone and I sort of ducked out in the first round, didn't make like a top 16 or something and then just left. I think it might have been my first Nationals. Do you remember who you um, lost to? No, I've got no idea. I do remember beating Isaac. That's all I remember. Oh, okay. Sweet. Um, did Manat's V-Trigger 1 need the timer increase? Definitely. Um, I think it was quite weak as a three bar V trigger before the buff. Um and the buff puts it in a really it's just a lot more interesting now. Um because you don't just sort of like scramble and throw away your orbs and try and get something. You can play far more like methodical with it. And I find that a lot more interesting. Uh for a laugh, who from the NZFGC would you love to see have their player profile held ransom? Their player profile held ransom? And what do you mean by that? Oh sorry, like their um like their account. Held ransom. Oh, so so um, so the person can't access their account. So when they go to play online, they just can't. It says the server like they just can't get to the server because their profile is it's just it's just not working. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, probably Koki then, so that he can actually retire, like he said he will. Because he oh. he's been he's been playing more than I have. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, come back, Koki. All right, good pick. Um, and who's your waifu, Kamzes? Ah, oh, God, I am king of the weebs, so I have to have one, don't I? Uh, okay, I wasn't prepared for this question. Um, doesn't have to be fighting games. It can be any Wi-Fi, whether it be real life or other something other in another something in media. Man, this is actually tough. Because you can only have one, can't you? You can only have one. I've been told that many times. Uh, let's go with uh, Annie from Community. What, what, okay, what is it about her? Okay, I get it. Um, I mean, mostly it's because I was put on the spot. But, uh, I don't know. She's just, I guess she's just my type. <laughs> okay. Well, and, um, 
obviously she's very attractive as well. <laughs> hey, thanks again, Cam, for, for coming on, bro. Uh, for your friends and family, do you have any last words or shout outs? Uh, shout outs to the Salt Factory. Um, uh, they've been playing more league than fighting games these days, but still this a uh, bunch of guys I can think of to play games with and hang out with. Um, and to Standing Fierce and Dave and all the people behind the scenes that are just workhorses and none of this would happen without them. Um, and to Reno, I'll get you next time.